Hello traders, I want to take a look at Boeing right here. I want to go over some quick bottom-up fundamentals, macro fundamentals, technicals, and then how we're going to start playing this. So with the bottom-up fundamentals, for those of you who don't know, way back in February, I made a video on Boeing where I went through a full Boeing valuation and how I would look at Boeing. And over there, I essentially said it's overvalued. And I said it's overvalued because it's too fragile and the market doesn't recognize that. And of course, it ended up being a good short, regardless of coronavirus. So many people are going to say that it was all due to coronavirus, but coronavirus was simply just a catalyst. But overall, it was a good short when we shorted up here. And of course, it ended up coming down all the way to here. And you could have played that in many different ways. But overall, that was a good short. And coronavirus was a catalyst for that fragility to play out. So I'll link it in the description below and I'll link it in the comments section below. But in that video, I said that Boeing has so little cash and it was already losing money beforehand, losing $2 right there, made $2 on those earnings, lost almost $6 right there. So it was, it was a bit of a sideways movement in earnings but all it took was a little fragile recession, and I was just saying garden variety recession. I was not talking about a big crash, but I just said all it takes is a small garden variety recession and Boeing goes bankrupt or has to be bailed out by the government, which I thought was a likely scenario. But I essentially said Boeing has so little cash. Boeing has a lot of debt, and that's why Boeing can't make any money is because, first off, it's so cash flow poor because of what has happened um, with this airplanes and the fact that they aren't able to manufacture them anymore because of what's going on with safety regulations over there because they're going to have to come up with a new airplane and that's probably going to take them at least a couple of months if not a year to actually get the thing rolling and actually get it to start cash flowing for them. So that was the first thing right there is that it's going to take a long time and it's going to be a slow bleed where you have so little cash, a lot of debt that's causing negative earnings, and on top of that, your cash flow poor. And so it was creating a situation where we said that the market isn't realizing how fragile this is. The market doesn't realize how fragile Boeing is as a short position, and that there is a pain trade to the downside because the market doesn't realize that the amount of cash that Boeing has, that the large debt that Boeing has, um, is unsustainable. Because all it takes is a couple of negative quarters of earnings and one or two big quarterly losses in earnings and a lack of a new uh, way to find cash flow and Boeing's gone. Boeing's bankrupt without the help of the government. And I do think Boeing would be bankrupt right now without the help of the government. And so that's what we came on set. And of course, that became fairly good trade right there. The thing is, though, we didn't add coronavirus in there. I just said there would be a catalyst, that there's likely a catalyst for this fragility. And so that's definitely something that affected it right there. And we're still in that sort of a situation right now. The only difference is that now Boeing is getting the government's help and the market likes that. But other than that, we're in a situation where Boeing still has a lot of debt. And if we look at the earnings that are expected... It's expected to lose over $2. And so looking at the annual balance sheet, cash for Boeing is less than two or less than five, excuse me, less than $9.5 billion. So less than $9.5 billion. And if you're losing $2, Let's just say the earnings were a little bit worse because some other, again, some other fragile event happened. Some other catalyst caused a fragile event to happen. And maybe it's the second wave of coronavirus. So instead of negative $2, which are estimated in earnings, after all the good news has been pumped in there, maybe it's negative $3. Well, the amount of cash that Boeing has is only about $15 per share. All it takes is five quarters of bad earnings, and this company is completely bankrupt. And on top of that, that's just the cash. It doesn't even count how much debt it has uh, on its balance sheet that it has to pay later on. So you have all these different things adding up on the bearish side. The only thing that's holding it up is the fact that the government is ready to bail Boeing out at any moment. 
So I'm clearly bearish because of those bottom off fundamentals. It's cash flow poor. It has low amounts of cash. It's losing money on a consistent basis. And it has a lot of debt. The only thing that's holding this up is the government, or if it's somehow able to turn this whole situation around very quickly, but the probability of it happening is very low, and it's having a very high cash burn. So that's the first thing with bottom-up fundamentals. What about with macro fundamentals? One of the biggest things that people can say, and I would agree with this, is that we're heading into an inflationary environment, and all of you that watch this channel a lot know that I've been saying that from the beginning of this of the creation of this channel, that we are heading into a higher inflationary environment, and that companies that have debt will eventually likely have the debt wiped off their balance sheets, because Boeing is able to take this debt, roll it in to newer debt, and then roll that debt into newer debt that isn't due for over another decade, eventually the inflation just wears out all that debt. Because all debt is, that's a future payment of money. But if money is worthless, and I had to pay you something that's worthless in the future, then the debt is essentially just wiped off the balance sheet. But it still creates a problem where it's not making any money. It's cash flow poor. So instead of losing money, you're just not making any money. But that's still not a good position. I don't want to own something that's not making any money. So it's, you're still in a bad position either way. So I would never want to go along this thing unless they were able to start creating cash flows. That is the only way that I would want to go along this is that if they were able to create cash flows with wider margins. But on the macro side of things, I do expect that the government is ready to bail out Boeing basically at any moment. And that's the problem with just short selling this is that you have the massive overload of the fact that there's lots of inflation being created by monetary policy, fiscal policy, bailing out Boeing. That's what's really hurting the short sellers. If it weren't for that, this thing would be bankrupt by now, I believe. So from the technical perspective, what areas do we need to watch out for? There does seem to be some support around this level. And overall, I expect the broader market to consolidate. And Boeing does have, since Boeing is a Dow component, it does have fairly high correlation with the broader market. It has been less of a correlation though over the last couple of months. Um, unlike a year ago where it was a very high correlation, Boeing could move the whole market. Now, not so much though. But still, I would say that um, Boeing has a fairly high correlation to the market. So also in the link in the description below and pinned in the comments section, I will add um, a S&P 500 analysis that I did yesterday in the link in the description below, pinned in the comments section, you can look at that. And over there, I'm actually going to go over what I think will happen to the broader market. And that has an effect on Boeing. Because Boeing is part of a larger index, as people buy into that index, they are buying into Boeing indirectly. So that is something to remember right there, is the positioning. And the fact that Boeing is going to have that correlation to the broader market. With that said, though, it's a very weak bounce. And it's a very weak bounce... Because from its bottom, yeah, sure, it bounced over 100% from its bottom. Probably, I would say, we can actually take a look right here. And we can go right here, take a look. And then we're going to put our target up here. And it went up 171%. So it went up quite a bit. And it had that bounce, but it was nearly nothing um, close to the amount that it went down. So it didn't have the same amount of bounce as the rest of the market because of the amount that it went down. And the market is starting to realize that these laggard sectors, like the financials, like the airlines, like Boeing, they are in a completely different situation. If I look at something like Apple or Facebook, Yes, it's fully valued. Yes, it's trained for 30 times earnings, but at least it makes money. At least it has wider margins. At least it has cash on the balance sheet. At least it has lower debt. Right here, though, it's a completely different situation. So, with that said, I want to start getting short at some of these levels. So, I am expecting consolidation because my analysis for the broader market says that we are overdue for consolidation. That in the broader market, the VIX is way overstating volatility and that there's this volatility risk room, and that we have to see the VIX contract, we have to see implied volatility contract, and that we have to see sideways consolidation before anything further happens. So I do expect 
that the most likely scenario for Boeing is that it just chops out in a range because it came and it topped out in this area of the range, bottomed out, bottomed out, topped out right here, came back up, had a, essentially 15% up day, but I just expected it to chop sideways. With that said, what's the trade for Boeing? So if it's chopping sideways, going long absolutely does not help. And on top of that, I would never go long because of the fundamentals. But going short doesn't help either. And so what I want to do is that I want to sell a call right here. So sell a call right here, about 30 days to expiration. We want to generally look at the implied volatility term structure to see whether we want to sell options further out or sell options closer to expiration. Right here, because this term structure is still backwardated, we do want to sell options a lot closer to expiration. I would want to sell a call up here. If I sell a call up here right now, it's going to put us in a position where as long as the stock stays below this level, and I think that's a strong area of resistance, and it will stay below that level, but as long as it stays below this level right here, we're good. And so I do believe that we could see a situation where it gets up here, but is that it's going to stay below that level. And so we just collect the premium. If the stock goes just slightly above this level, or if it lands at this level of expiration, then we're going to be short 100 shares of Boeing. And I'm fine with that. And what we'll do is that we're short 100 shares of Boeing at the very top of the range. And so that's good right there. And then we'll sell some puts on it. And we will sell some puts down here. And whenever you short 100 shares and then you sell a put option, it's a covered put. And so we'll sell a put down here on Boeing. And so it gets to that bottom end of its range and it bounces. And so the puts never get in the money, but we're still good on short positions because we got short at the top of the range and we're selling puts at the bottom of its range. And so we'll just do covered puts for the time being as it stays in this range, which I believe that we're gonna have at least for the next probably three months that we're going to be in a fairly tight range. If though I'm wrong and Boeing breaks bearish, which agrees with my fundamental viewpoint though, if Boeing breaks bearish, we're good on the calls. We're still making money because it's staying below that price. We can just roll the calls down and make some more money if we still want to participate in it going lower. So we can do that if it breaks bearish. If it breaks bullish, that's our pain trade right there. That's where it hurts us the most. So if it breaks bullish, what we would do is that we buy back the calls and then we roll them up in strike price, but then we roll them out in expiration. So let's say we sold in 30 days to expiration. Right now it's 15 days to expiration. Boeing has rallied up a lot and it's all the way all, it's up, say over here already. What we do then is that we buy back the calls and then after buying back the calls, we then go and then we roll them up in strikes. So we might roll them all the way up to these resistance levels around here. And then we roll them all the way up in strike to compensate for the amount that we would have lost though in buying it back and the larger debit that we would have paid. We sell it out a lot further in expiration. We go out 90 or 120 days further out in expiration, sell it farther out. Um, I'm going that far out in expiration and that compensates us for that loss. And I, of course, don't see a situation where we see Boeing essentially get above this resistance into all-time highs. I just don't see that. And if it does, then we have alternative situations um, or alternative trades that we can do for those situations. So that's what I see going on in Boeing right there. Simply selling some calls at the top of its range. If they become in the money, we'll own it and we'll do covered puts. If it really flies up, then we'll just roll the calls up and over. And if it really flies down, we'll roll the calls up um, or down and over uh, in strike and expiration. If you have any questions on this, go ahead and ask in the comment section below. Also, you guys can uh, email us, um, therealalphaaction at gmail.com. The reason I'm telling you guys that is because oftentimes I can't see all the comments in the comment section. Last, uh, I had a video previously where it said that there were four comments, but I could only see two comments. And I was not getting notified about the comments either. So if you guys are in a situation like that where the comments are not getting answered for whatever, for whatever reason, just go ahead and uh, email us. Other than that, thanks for watching everybody and happy trading.